<coughs> mama me, mama ma, mo 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 mo, hello. <coughs> God, can you believe nobody wants to date me? I'm just the pinnacle of grace and dignity and attractiveness. <coughs> but I do have to clear my throat, pardon me. <laughs> Welcome back to the live stream, boys. I'm happy to have you here for another installment of Phoenix Wright's Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations Turnabout Beginnings Part 1 2 The Trial. For anybody who was not here yesterday, uh, many of things happened, so you gotta get caught up, okay? Basically, what had happened was <laughs> let me give you the tea in the rundown. Uh, <clears throat> we're back in a flashback episode. Phoenix appeared to be in some kind of hospital bed, and he's reviewing an old case of Mia Faze, her first case when she was alive. Um, a woman named Valerie Hawthorne was murdered. <laughs> she was found in the trunk of a car. The suspect is a man named Terry Falls, who's an escaped convict who five years before this flashback, that I think is six years earlier, so in, uh, in retrospect from present day, we're going back in time 11 years, Terry Falls kidnapped a 14-year-old girl, held her hostage on a bridge, then killed her. It's yikes. It's a, it's a yikes situation. Five years after that, he allegedly kills the policewoman who was there on the bridge and testified to get him convicted and put him on death row, which happens when you kill a child. Uh, and, uh, he killed her, Valerie Hawthorne. So, except we don't think he did. We, we are his defense attorney. So I strike that from the record. We think he's innocent. We think the real culprit is Dahlia Hawthorne, who I have realized, by the way, is 19 at, the, at this trial that we're in right now, which means five years earlier, Dahlia Hawthorne would have been 14 years old. And the unknown child who was murdered five years ago was also 14 years old. So I'm suspicious about that. I'm suspicious about a lot of things. Also, Diego Armando is here. He is a uh, Godot. So, so there's a lot. We got to get into it. This has been my five minute recap. So we're going to open the case. Let me uh, see who's in the chat actually now that I'm here. Angel H. Hey y'all. J Rocket 10. Uh, I don't know if you plan to play the other games, but if you do, the best way to do it uh, is on BlueStacks. It emulates mobile games for computers. Um, now, I haven't tested this yet, J-Rocket, but I actually do have a 3DS capture card. I bought it <laughs> off of a fellow content creator on YouTube, whose name I actually forget. Oh, but I have his card right here. Um, Saffron Screens. Um... So, Saffron Screens, I think his YouTube is like Saffron Gaming, maybe I'm wrong about that. He's the guy who had a 3DS capture kit, and I bought it af off of him, um, because I was really wanting one for a long time. So I actually have a 3DS that can be recorded authentically on the computer. It might not work very well, especially since I use a Mac and the technology is designed to work with a PC. But I'm trying. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Pyro Demon Eye, hello, Matthew Peters! Aw, shucks, thanks buddy. That's everything is here, um... That would art amazing. Thunder Phoenix 256, yo, let's go! Uh, good evening, George, Changeling DJ, Pyro, Demon Eye, Curtis, Bryce, and Alicio. It's good to see all of you guys. Oh, there's so many of you. God, we're gonna have a good case today. Let's check in with our clients and see how things are going. Also, uh, fun fact for me, today I'm excited because I was able to take out the trash. You guys don't know this, but uh, where I live, uh, because of the snowstorms, maybe, the, the, guy, the trash men, <laughs> they didn't come and take our trash away from the dumpster and it was overflowing. And it was overflowing so bad that people started throwing their trash around the dumpster. And the dumpster became completely inaccessible. And I had garbage in my apartment. And I was like, well, I'm not going to go and climb over a mountain of trash to try and throw this in the dumpster. And I'm not going to throw it on the ground because we already, we're going to have rats. We're going to have a big rat problem. And we probably do. We also have stray cats, though. So the cats might hunt the rats. I don't... Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot. <laughs> Anyways, it is February 16th, 1.14 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 4. I think it's about time we start. I, I think I've wasted enough of everyone's time. You probably want to see where things go, so let's see where things go. Stephen, hello. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Oh, oh my god, I'm sorry. Oh, I want to say thanks. You're real good. You really hooked me up. Um, thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah. There's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. 
obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Yeah, anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. Yeah, that's right, she's using a pseudo name, by the way. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that's Zebra Boys on death row for. I didn't do nothing! I didn't kill nobody! I never lie! Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay. I trust you. That day, five years ago. I dream of it every day. All right, hold that thought, Mr. Falls. I want to listen to this and I want to focus, but my throat is a little bit parched. I'm going to have a simple drink of water before we go in. Pinkies out, gentlemen. is an ASMR channel now. I don't know if you can hear the things that I am saying, but this is one of my backup careers. If the live stream doesn't work, I'm just going to whisper to men and say, hello, I know you want to touch the underwear that is on my body, and I might just take it off just for you, daddy. Ah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's pretend that never happened. <clears throat> All right, he dreams of it every day. Let's find out what happens. Let's focus. This picture it reminds me of everything. Bridge looks sane, just like then five years ago. Like a cloud fall apart. Fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like this for at least five years. Huh. Sorry, buddy. You sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It's true. I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm sorry, your girlfriend? Mr. Falls, you were 20 years old. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old. I don't like her just as much as no everybody else does, and I'm sure she was probably an evil 14-year-old, but that doesn't mean you can, like, pull a James Charles here and just start dating minors. That's not appropriate, sir. Y your girlfriend? What? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name... Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? The girl. The girl, let her go. Shut up! C c come any closer, and I kill her! Sorry but you're not going to get the chance. The, de the, 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 the detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. At first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but if it was to protect her little sister, I could understand why she did it. Mom! No protect sister! Valerie, betray me! Betray us! What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything! All lies! All make-believe! Kidnapping too! What? What? A make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia! My girlfriend! My love! My teen angel! Ew, did he actually say my teen angel? Uh, he's seen one too many soap operas. Ah, oh, jeez. I'd do anything, she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Wait, hold on a moment. So what you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... 
Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Valerie was in on it. Dahlia's family rich. Jewelry business. We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. Send note to her dad. Ask for a two million dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. These girls were extorting their dad off. So is Valerie just as evil as uh, Dahlia? And, and so clearly Dahlia was evil at the ripe young age of 14. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Um, like unless this guy's a master actor, he's clearly got like the IQ of a short bus kid. Sorry to pull that joke back in, but as long <laughs> I've already said it a couple of times, so let's throw it back in here. Uh, he, he's no criminal mastermind. He, he's definitely the brain-dead dunce that uh, these girls for sure manipulated to be a pawn in their scheme. That, that's clear as day to me. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but th that woman! That woman, Valerie, she'd do it for real. She shoot at me for real, me and Dahlia. I was shot in an arm. Dahlia, she jump in river. Bobby, hello, welcome to the chat. And thank you for telling me that maroon looks good on me. <laughs> jump? Wait, 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 hold up. You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I'd never push it. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over me. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. Wow. She's got amazing posture. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the roaring river 40 feet below. So weird that she was testifying when there was no judge in that chair. It's five years, all I wonder is, why? Why'd she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her, just ask why. Why'd you lie? Why'd you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth, that's all. So that's why... That's why you made the crazy escape. Just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Where's what? <laughs> come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. You don't know? No, really, I don't know. It's gone with Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day on the bridge, Dahlia put it in a backpack. Now gone with Dahlia. Gone forever. Into Eagle River. Wow. You know, this has been a pretty successful uh, chat in the lobby here. You, we usually never get this much information. <laughs> it disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now, we're ready to go. <laughs> Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dal Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her, my sweet Dahlia. They never found her. Swallowed by river. Gone. Dahlia. A teen angel. Teen angel. How old was she anyway? Just 14. F 14?! Guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds, Mr. Falls! Plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two mil- Oh man, oh man. Angels these days. 
Falls takes the fall. Doo -doo we got the pun, boys! He's the fall man! And gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dolly a Hawthorne an angel? Or is she really... It's time, kitten. Looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. Alright. Training wheels come off now, Mia. You've got a strike while the iron's hot. Dale Communist! Hello! David Mahone! Hello! It's one of my rules, remember it. Okay, let's check into court and see if we can solve this case once and for all. District Court, courtroom number four. Let me see my other love of my life, Edgeworth. <clears throat> oh yeah, now then. Let's continue the trial of Mr. Terry Fowles, eh? Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. Hmm, you're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, try to pin the crime on an innocent student. That's just... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, oh yeah. Certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to be to back yourself up as a mo to back up as a do you have any evidence <laughs> to act as a motive? Um, obviously I do, Your Honor. <laughs> huh. Still acting as tame as a kitten. Mr. Armando. Listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Oh, he said the line! Oh, oh my god. And then we pass it on to Phoenix. It originates from Godot. He's the arbiter of the you gotta smile when things get tough line. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots. That's the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but... I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me. May I speak, Mr. Judge? Oh yeah, of course. Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. I'd like... I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why... I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Oh, yeah, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. Looks like the witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are the darkest for her. Click. She lights right up. Hello, Frank. I am having a wonderful evening. Thank you for reaching out. Very well, then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. Melissa Foster's history. I... I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing an officer who testified against you five years ago? Or kidnapping a poor girl? I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm. Out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing the murder. Oh yeah, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. Um, you bet. Somehow, I have to tie her to this case. Alright. Well, you know what we're gonna do, boys? We're gonna press it all! Alright. Out of the country, you say? That's convenient. So, what country were you living in then? We were all living abroad, but after my parents were killed... It was a brutal civil war. She had to try and make her way back home alone. I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. Oh my god, is this a Reddit user? And then everyone started clapping. It's an absolutely true story. 
kind of sob story is this? What do I do? Should I press her for details? Yes! <laughs> um, witness! Answer my question! I'll even repeat it for you. What country were you in? Oh! Your Honor, this line of questioning is childish. What country she was in and how many languages she may speak are irrelevant here. What we're here to evaluate is whether this witness has any connection to this case. I have lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. That's why I could never have known Mr. Falls or Detective Hawthorne. Yes, I think we've established that point. Oh yeah, indeed. Well then, shall we add what you've just stated to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. Didn't know either the victim or the defendant. Alright, well... It's gonna be hard to prove that Melissa Foster didn't know them. We'll have to prove that Dahlia Hawthorne did. You didn't know either person? Are you certain of that? Yes. I'm afraid I'm rather shy around people. Hmm, oh well, that can't be helped. Why is she just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? The first time you saw either of them was when they were on the bridge, is this correct? Yes. It really was a coincidence. Until I entered college, I had never been to Eagle Mountain before. So then what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors. Picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. Don't look much like a hiker to me. You do look like a digger of sorts. Oh, shots fired! <laughs> but Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here, and no trains run through there. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. Didn't know you were such a goth. By the way, what's the name of your college? Oh my god, Edgeworth, are we not allowed to know anything about this woman? The prosecution objects to any questions that involve the witness's private life. All that matters is that she is a material witness to a crime. The witness doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious in intent. <sighs> Thank you. She's really gone too far. Hmm. Miss Fay, you're treading on thin ice. But I hardly said anything! Talk about sensitive. These crocodile tears. God, is this how difficult it is to deal with a pretty woman in court for real? And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Mm. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, that's... Oh, God, he's so cute. I Now that you guys have mentioned it from last stream, I can't stop seeing Von Karma in him, and it's amazing. <laughs> that, that's a really cool uh, little detail that the game threw in, to like, really have him like copy his mannerisms while he's early in his career. Unfortunately, Miss Faye, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that at the time an officer showed her this photo. Hmm. Oh yeah. Seems like a rather serious mistake. Ha. <laughs> it's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That, that's not fair. That wicked inmate. I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago? A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death? Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Excuse me? Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client, he forgot what the detective looked like. Isn't that right, Mia? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. 
Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. Let's press harder, though. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What do you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Falls' reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. You know, sometimes it's best to not poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Um... Confidential police materials written by the victim. Let's have it amended to the testimony anyways. We might be able to use it. Your Honor, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. The prosecution is no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer, and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove that point. No, that's not why I... Enough! Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Press this. What do you mean by lucky? Well... It's February now. Everyone is wearing scarves. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like he said... Then you yourself might have been killed. Hmm, that would have been a terrible loss for this world. Ha! Huh. Looks like you pressed too hard this time, kitten. Mr. Armando? Keep looking around and you're gonna lose sight of the finish line. Justice is blind, but she's not deaf. Sometimes you have to know when not to talk. Okay, maybe all of that was a bit of an oopsie on my part. Alright, you think the guy's a terrible monster, do you? You knew about that incident? But weren't you out of the country until the year before last? Oh, Mia! Picking up on the details! Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. They had an in-depth report about his whole history. So, you were still living abroad five years ago, is that right? Yes. Can't let her get away with these lies. Listen to me. She's neck deep in this whole thing. Somehow you're just gonna have to get her to show off to the court her true self. Alright, so I have an idea with the scarf thing, because we did add that line. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. My brain is a little bit befuddled, so as a witness, she saw a scarf that is not white. She wouldn't have had access to the victim's notes, because it's confidential police materials. At first, I was like, oh, but she knew about the white scarf because we already talked about how the scarf was supposed to be white in trial. But... Melissa... She wasn't summoned to court yet, I don't think. That was over- that was only for Dick's testimony. So if- if she wasn't inside of the courtroom, then she shouldn't know about the whiteness of the scarf, because she saw a blue scarf, or a teal, I don't a, a ba- a, a colored scarf of some form, not a white scarf, and she shouldn't know this, right? 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 Objection! Yeah, that's right! Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, oh, you were talking about the scarf right there, eh? Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Oh, white? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Ah! Yeah, try your best, Edgeworth. Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Oh yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but... There's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... 
because she knew about the note, boys. Witness, have you ever seen this note? Note? I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Hmm, I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Fall's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf. Ah! Witness, you knew what this note said, and it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. Ah! Yeah, don't feel so smart now, do you, Miss Hawthorne? Well, Miss Foster... That's what I meant to say. No! Order! Order in the court. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Oh, boys, we're going to expose her! Get ready, girl! Did you say one more person? That's right. A person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yes, I did. Do we have a profile? We do! Dahlia Hawthorne, deceased, allegedly. Valerie's younger sis, a victim of the kidnap murder, fell from the bridge. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne. I haven't heard of that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There's her name. Right there. Oh, what's this? So, who's this person? Dahlia Hawthorne. Hmm. Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. Oh, the dead? Yeah. Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Oh, killed in a crime. Wait, you don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. Yeah, object to that, Mia! She's got the hair flip. My girl is bringing the fire today! You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying, Miss Faye? Of course people thought she had died five years ago, when she fell off the dusky bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found! She was declared illegally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. That doesn't mean anything. But the fact remains that a body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster! I believe that's the, um, hmm, I think that's the same age you are. Isn't that weird? What a, what a odd coinky dink, little Miss Foster. Uh. Even you couldn't, Miss Faye. You're not saying. Oh, I'm saying. But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. I came for blood today. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Ha! Nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three-alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit-and-run arsonist. I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Yeah, we got the gallery! The peanut gallery! They're losing their minds! Frankie! Did you hear that Dahlia Hawthorne's alive? Yeah, babe, I'm sitting right here, babe. <laughs> Now's my chance to make Edward squirm. Hmm. Oh yeah, witness! Just who are you anyway? I... I'm... I didn't think it would come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, witness. Yes. I understand. What? What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. Bobby, we need a Mari and a DNA test in here. Stat! I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't mean... 
Yes. The prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What? Ha. Huh. Looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? If you hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Allow me to introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Hmm. But, but, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well, but, well, as you can see. Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Betraying Evan and Hell! Again, Edgeworth's hiding evidence. Yeah, see, this is... It's it's cool, because this is back in the day when Edgeworth was still very much, like... His mindset, this 20-year-old guy, is win at all costs. It's like the ends justify the means type of mentality. So he's totally like, I'm just going to do whatever it takes to get my guilty verdict. It wasn't until Phoenix came along that we kind of, like, got him thinking that maybe things were wrong. He's, he's a total Von Karma spawn. <laughs> she was merely accidentally a witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of a victim. And now we finally find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Really, Miss Faye? I must say, your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on another innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you? Please, let's take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm, oh yeah. But even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. Her sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. Oh, what? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Faye. Do you have any evidence to back your assertion? What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see... I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it all around on me. Ha. Huh. Think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Um, that wasn't me. That was this guy, the crazy coffee addict. No. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Ha. What makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Ah. Uh, well, I am sweating bullets. Think you're in a tough spot, huh? Well, of course, aren't I? No. You just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? Huh, the rashness of youth, how charming. This coming from someone younger than me. Hmm. Now then, let's not waste any more time, Miss Faye. What motive would this witness have had for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Well, it's funny you ask. I think, therefore, because one thing is, uh... This line, tell her this time the whole truth must come out, it sounds like Valerie might have been trying to confess about what they had done. And that might have caused her to want to kill her sister. We, that, we, I think we'll have to build to connecting the diamonds to the case. But I think uh, Valerie's note that she might want to come clean, I think that might be the thing that gets this, that got her killed. Let's try it. Take that! Well, the story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie Hawthorne and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time, the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. Oh, the whole truth, eh? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. 
to keep her mouth shut permanently. A terrific story, Miss Faye. If you like fiction, that is. Enlighten the court, Miss Faye. What was the secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dolly on Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Yes, and I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. Wh what testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Ah! Oh. Very well. I'll grant you your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but could you enlighten us one more, uh, once more? My little maple leaf. <laughs> Ew. Um, okay, I'll try, Mr. Judge, but if you call me a fucking maple leaf again, I'll really have your head next time. Putting on the old charm one more time, eh, Dahlia? But this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Well, not exactly, because we know that. We know where she ends up after this. Alright, five years ago. Let's look at it. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister, Valerie, brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me. He shoved me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. It's a pretty wild story. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred, your honor. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're to believe that after all that, he, she murdered her sister? That's simply preposterous. Oh, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Faye! Um, yes, Your Honor? As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Fuck. Ha. <laughs> we're not allowed to fight, let's twist some arms. Listen up, we still got that info. That ace up our sleeves. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping happened five years ago was staged. That's right. It was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. Ah, do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. <laughs> I love flashbacks from ten minutes earlier. Okay, how are we going to expose her kidnapping as being a farce? That's what we got to figure out. So we have to be very gentle. Am I allowed to press things? I guess there's only one way to find out, right? <laughs> By pressing! Did you and Mr. Falls have a relationship? Yes. As a tutor. You were tutoring him, Mr. Falls? No, of course not. Don't be stupid, Mia Faye. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. He probably came up with the kidnapping plan during that time. He doesn't seem like the type that would be a tutor, though. The Hawthorns are the ones are in the jewelry trade and are quite wealthy, you see. Hmm. Quite the clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. Did I hear him right? Did he just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? A red diamond! I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of two million dollars. Oh, two million dollars! Think of all the double doubles I could get at the Timmy Holes! It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. Hmm, a two million dollar pint of milk? I don't know what to think about that. The defendants demanded that her sister Valerie make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I want to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why do you think he wanted to make the exchange up there on that mountain? If he ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. 
In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. With only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. What a wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls is. Yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, uh, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain and something else happened. Um, yeah, hi, chat. Sometimes we have bot problems. The re I think the big problem with the reason is that I don't have moderators. I I've seen other people who have, like, bigger followings. On when they stream, they have, like, people who are moderators in their chat. And I don't really understand how any of that works. Because <laughs> I'm a professional. But to my best educated guess, I think one of the jobs of a moderator is having the ability to, like, filter out bots that appear in, like, chats. And then also filtering out, like, really, really hateful comments. So please, nobody, please nobody spam with really, really hateful comments. <laughs> you guys are a really great audience and you're really supportive. <laughs> After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. Well, that was a dangerous thing to do considering you were being held hostage. Yes, but actually, that saved my life. Oh, what do you mean? You see, Mr. Falls was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow, I just knew he was gonna use it. Wow, Mr. Falls, looking ripped. I knew he was gonna use that knife to kill me. Professionally oblivious. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Falls was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. Hmm. I was dazed. I turned to try to run away, but Mr. Falls turned to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large, bloodthirsty grin. Oh, bloodthirsty grin, oh! And in the next instant, I was falling! All right, save your crocodile tears. I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep and incredibly swift. I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I had been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. The crumbling bridge, nowhere to run. And then just one little shove from behind. That was it. Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. And I survived. But I was afraid I might be kidnapped again. Why? Terry Falls went to jail. And that's why you hid your identity? Yes. I only told my sister. Valerie Hawthorne. Yes. She's the one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally, this witness has been deceased for five years. I... I didn't ever want something like that to happen to me again. So I decided to change my identity. Great. <laughs> and that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? Yes! My sister helped me get the official paperwork taken care of. That makes sense. Without an insider's help, doing all of the paperwork would have been virtually impossible. She was the only person left in the world I could count on. And you... you think I killed her? There's no way I could. Hmm. It's in the moment of truth for this witness, too. Once the truth about this stage kidnapping comes out, everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. I've got to prove the kidnapping was a hoax. Huh. So how are we going to prove that the kidnapping was a hoax? I guess probably with this diamond. It was lost in the river. Um, Sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. So, I think we want to present it, but I'm trying to figure out where I want to present it. I think... She says that Valerie brought the diamond, and she says that after she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. 
So after she made the exchange, then the diamond should have been in Mr. Falls' possession, but it wasn't. So therefore, I think because... I... This is what it's... I... Damn it! I think I want to present it, but I think that was the wrong statement. Yeah, 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 sorry. P penalize me, daddy. Ah! Uh, yeah! Alright. Let me, uh... Let me hop in with a real quick save of confidence. <laughs> Whoops. Save. And then... Uh, 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 uh... Valerie was stepped... That's not important right now. Bridge was 40 feet above the water. Actually, hold the phone. Hold the phone right here. Let me think about this. He shoved me off the bridge from behind. Well... What does she mean by behind? Based on where they were, they're pretty close to, uh... Not the river. Uh... Taken by the bridge, unchanged for five years. Objection! Yeah, boy! <laughs> Sorry, I got excited. Whew. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into Eagle River. However, that's pretty hard to believe. B but it's true, I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said, that's hard to believe. I should have said, that's impossible, Dahlia. I love these women at each other's throats. Impossible? I asked that the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge, now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in the last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind, as you have claimed... Yeah, buddy. Instead of being carried away by the river, you would have done a big fat splat all over the ground. You would have been smashed by the bedrock below. A most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you as far as from behind... The, 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 the notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible! Ah! Yeah, save your little princess, Edgy. Your honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. No, or you're gonna object to that. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made any difference. Ugh. Wow, park service must really suck in Japanifornia. No bridge repair in five years. <laughs> Oh, you're right. If the events occurred just as the witness had testified, then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Ah, uh, I... You see, I... Just a moment, your honor. It's true that the witness testified the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that it fell from the back end of the bridge. What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. <laughs> There's something really funny to me about this idea of these guys fighting back and forth about, like, how Dahlia was manhandled and pushed off a bridge. No, you know, they just grabbed her face and shoved her off back. No, actually, they grabbed her from the side and just smacked her off the side of the bridge. <laughs> like, the way- I don't- it's a funny picture in my head. Oh, if that's true, she would have fallen into the river, yeah. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgewood's explanation correct? Now that you mention it... I do remember now. When I fell off the bridge... My skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious! Order! Order in the court! 
It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. No, I'm not done yet. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe you reasoning on something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Wow, God, those eyes. They're terrifying, but why am I like a little bit turned on by them? Let's not look into it. Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Does it? Does it? Does it? I mean, the side has rails. Is, is that enough evidence to be like, hey, the sides of the bridge are guarded? It's the only thing that I think could possibly work here. I don't think anything else could. Let's try it. Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. Ah! But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this shouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Falls had been shot in the right arm. Oh, and more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Ugh. Yeah, I didn't think that one through, did you, buddy? So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That's clearly impossible. Ugh. What a... What is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark, Miss Faye? Yeah, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun in handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that? That would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current. But even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. Oh, then what was it? What's so important that she'd want to jump into the river? I'm glad you asked, Edgeworth. The witness is still alive. This effect alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of Eagle River. For a two million dollar diamond. Five years ago, someone, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. Oh! No, it, it can't be. Oh, but it can. Dahlia had it planned from the beginning. The two million dollars, she was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. And at the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Oh, what? that's simply ridiculous. Did you see that? She's turning her back again. We remember what that sprite means. What a... Your Honor, five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demo demonic plan? This woman is a demon! And there's one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. Oh, you, you mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. Conscience. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. Oh, what do you mean by that, Miss Faye? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister, and then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do it? She was going to tell the whole truth as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. 
And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. <laughs> Who is that laughing at a time like this? Ah. Forgive me. It's just hilarious. Who? Who witness? Is that you? You, you amuse me, woman. Miss Mia Fey. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally. You have the evidence to back it up, don't you? E evidence Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that... Hmm. Well, Miss Faye... I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye. Are you stupid or something? Oh my god! Backhands this woman! Frankie! Did you hear that? He called her stupid! I heard, babe. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. I is this it? Is it really over? Armando, help me out here, buddy. That girl has made a fool of me, and there's nothing I can do about it. Ha. <laughs> Without evidence, the trial's over. Who decided that? Mr. Armando! Oh, he is gonna help! Come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's testimony. T testimony? On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Falls' stolen car and then went to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Yeah, that's what I think. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who's the one person who can testify to that demon's crimes? Terry Falls can. Right? Because he was there, he... He's not the brightest bulb in the box, so uh, I don't know how good of a, t a job he'll do, but we can ask him. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. Oh, a new witness. Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant. There's only one person that can shed any further light on this situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne or whether it was in fact her younger sister, Dahlia, disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is Terry Falls. Yeah, bring him up. That's everything. Oh my God, this girl's evil like Megan from Drake and Josh. <laughs> oh, honestly, right? Yeah, Megan was like the little 14 year old spawn of Satan. I mean, she didn't murder anybody. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what is your take on this? Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, please bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Alright, well, so, so this is actually working out okay. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? No, oh, I, I don't believe it. No way. Dahlia died five years ago! Valerie betrayed me! Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not true! Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. 
Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne? Or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? D Dahlia, D Dahlia, D did you, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised, she promised never ever betray each other. Terry, Dahlia, it's true. Y you're alive. You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth. The, the real truth. I believed in you. I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But there is one thing I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. D Dahlia! Is he... Is my dude gonna lie for her? God damn it. He, is, he, is he gonna take the fall for her? Because he's Terry Falls. That's what's gonna happen, isn't it? I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls. Yours will be the final testament. Because we lose this, don't we? Because Edgeworth wins. He, he's gonna confess. He's gonna say he's guilty. Witness. Yeah! Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, 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 water. P please, water. What? C can't talk. Need water. Ha. Oh well, I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitter than hell itself. Yeah, that's great, Godot. I mean, Diego. All right, who Terry Falls saw? That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. It was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on Bridge. I watched my car from Bridge and never put no body in the car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. Yes, yes, who was the woman? We talked. She left. Uh, that was Valerie, not my Dahlia. Damn it. <laughs> Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would do the same for you? Ugh. That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Let me cross-examine him. Well then, Miss Faye. Please proceed with your cross -examine. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. I'm going to expose his lies. How I'm going to do it, I don't know. <laughs> but I skate by. That's what I do. I'm Mia Faye. Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence, Mr. Falls? Is that really what you want? There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten, I think. I'm gonna try. Okay. <sighs> Jesus, Mr. Falls. You couldn't make my job easy once, could ya? Stopped in front of Bridge. Alright, let's look for some lies. According to the note, the meeting was supposed to take place at 4.30. Certainly arrived early, didn't you? It was raining. Already dark, too. You waited on the bridge for 30 minutes? Mr. Falls? Eagle Mountain, that spot. Strong memories. Why'd he just clam up? Could it be he's hiding something here? Maybe. She wasn't there, so I waited on the bridge, okay. You were quite early, so you waited on the bridge, correct? Yeah, uh, I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Zebra Boy waited five years to ask a single question, to find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, 30 minutes must have been like the blink of an eye. It's funny how time has that, like, perspective effect, isn't it? <laughs> Watch my car from the bridge, never put no body in the car. You were watching the car? That bridge, other side is broken. No one can come from there. So I was watching car. Huh, what else were you expecting him to do? I suppose it's the obvious thing to do. Something's bothering me. I'm getting that feeling. A contradiction. I wonder what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyway. No one lives there. There's a small shrine up on the mountain, but that's it. Anyway, uh, no body, nobody came, no car, nothing. Finally, a woman came, she stood in front of him. Mr. Falls, think carefully now. Are you certain that it was Valerie Hawthorne? Uh, uh, I never lie, it's the truth. Oh, I know what's wrong. 
<laughs> the light bulb just flashed in my brain. Where's my photo? Yeah, the way they're standing on the bridge is, like, exactly the opposite of the way he's saying that he was standing on the bridge. They're in the wrong positions, based on his testimony. Um, if you remembered her face, then why'd you make her wear a scarf as identification? Oh, uh, sorry, I told a little lie. But the woman I met, she was different from the woman standing here now. She was different. It was Valerie. Talked, then she left. All right, well, let's keep pressing, even though I think I know what the answer is. What did you talk to her about anyway? Mr. Falls? Valerie told the truth about the kidnapping five years ago. She said someone needed to take the blame for it. That was all I could think to do, she said. That's why she lied. Got me the death penalty. And you were satisfied with that answer, witness? Dahlia died. It was my fault. But I don't really remember. Maybe I did push her in. Don't matter no more. Either way, my Dahlia, my sweet teen angel, dead. But she's not dead. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had nothing left to live for. It was Valerie, not my Dahlia. Okay, let's backtrack. I watched my car... Alright. It... 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 Where to present it? That's... Let me... Let me save with confidence really quick. <laughs> um, Where to put... Where to press... What, present what I think. I think I'm dead right on this. Because what he's saying does not match up. I watched my car from the bridge. That that positions him, basically. Then a woman came in front of him. It, I feel like it could be either of these two statements, honestly. When, what, what does he say when we press again? I was watching the car. Yeah, something. I'm getting... Alright, the, the contradiction highlight is on that statement, so let's try that statement. He was watching the car, but that's not the way you were standing. Addiction. Yeah! So, when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge, you're sure of that? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well, then I'm sure too, Miss Falls. Mr. Falls, sorry. <laughs> I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Well, what do you mean? Uh, well, uh, uh, uh. Oh, I'd love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo. It's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? But that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. <laughs> okay, my dude, let's relax. Um, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up, okay? We just want the truth. I got there around four o'clock, it's true. I had somewhere to go, special place. Did you go to this special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple. About 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under the base of a tree there. <gasps> it's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. Oh, this little bottle on a necklace. It's your memento. It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Oh no! That's the poison! Uh, Diego, don't touch it! <laughs> your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at 4 o'clock. But he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Ugh. With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. Uh, no! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance! Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it! Oh my god, are you okay, buddy? M Mr. Falls? 
Look, you don't have to cry about it. Oh my god! Wait, what? No! Oh no! That's enough, please. He... He poisoned himself? Witness! I promised her. Five years ago, if it ever happens. Yeah, we can't trust each other no more, then... We're supposed to drink bottle. No! Stop the trial! Your Honor, we need a recess. I... Uh, stupid. Can't keep promise. So... I did it. I drank bottle. No! We're so close. Just a little more. I was gonna prove your innocence. No. I don't want that. I don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls! Mr. Armando. Thanks for the coffee. Mr. Falls! Will someone call an ambulance? And so my first trial ended. Suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners. Only losers. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul, I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person, the true criminal Dahlia Hawthorne, she left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. Unforgivable, that witch. It was the defendant that got poisoned. But but so does Diego Armando. There was that whole thing where Grossberg said, Oh, Mia, that time that your boyfriend got poisoned or whatever. Right? Was the coffee also poisoned? Maybe he... I don't... Mr. Armando. We were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. No, it's not. Don't let him tell you that it is. Don't cry, kitten. You're gonna make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Mia. <clears throat> Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. Uh, uh, oh my god! The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Mr. Armando! No matter how tough the case, and no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Then you can file them away and eventually forget them. One year later, in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Yeah, 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 okay. Holy shit, you guys, what a case! Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her. It was finally all over. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately. I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all of this. And that's the end of the episode? That's the lead-in to the next episode?
episode five, Bridge to a Turnabout. It's my boy, Phoenix. I think that's the, the, the final episode. A brand new episode has been added. Holy shit, what do you think is going to happen in the next one? Overwrite the selected save data for sure. Wow. Okay. That was pretty- that was pretty intense, I think, a little bit. Uh, I, it got a little bit emotionally charged for me at the ends there, uh, as- as things happen sometimes. Um, <clears throat> but I guess that's gonna wrap things up for today. This is a very interesting one. It's like the entire game is all, uh, really fleshed out and built together this time around. So, starting tomorrow, um, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, we're going to begin the final case of uh, the Phoenix Wright Trilogy, Episode 5, Bridge to the Turnabout. And um, what I've been told is that... Uh, I've been told by a lot of people that like the final case of the final game of the trilogy, the original trilogy... I know there are more games after this, and I intend to play them. <laughs> but I know for the original trilogy, most people have hyped up the final case as like, being far and away like the best in the game. So, I'm really excited for it. I hope you guys are excited for it. I've been told it's one that w is really worth checking out. So, if you guys are also on this journey with me, checking out these Phoenix Wright games, I think it's one you're not going to want to miss. So, let's check it out tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. What in the world is going to happen next when we go back into the present day with Phoenix? As always, if you've been watching this all the way through, please leave a like. The engagement is very helpful and helps support the live stream. Uh, you can also subscribe to the live stream so you get notifications when I go live and things like that. Um, you know the stuff. You know the drill. That's all from me. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, and if you guys are not blind and you've already watched this, of course, I'll have you at the ready to help me out with any helpful hints. No spoilers, though. Remember, I will explicitly ask for hints if I need them. But otherwise, we're just going to keep our little thinking caps on. All right. Thank you, guys. Toodles, boys. Good night.